Hey, you respiratory therapists. Are you thinking about getting your adult critical care specialty credential, your ACCS? Well, really, you should. But the question you probably have is, what is on the adult critical care curriculum or the test that is above and beyond what you learned as an RRT? That's the subject of today's video. Come along, we'll check it out. All right, what we're doing here is tr we're trying to figure out and review what's on the adult critical care examination that is above and beyond what was found in the RRT manual or what we learned as a registered respiratory therapist. Those are the things we need to learn. Let me first of all say that you can get your adult critical care, especially if you have some experience in, in respiratory therapy already, and especially in the ICUs or a critical care setting. What we find is that respiratory therapists who have already been working actually do quite well on the ACCS exam, better than they might think. But there are some additional things that you need to study. Now, let me also say that even though we might do a video on all of these things, and we will, of course, there's still going to be some detail. In other words, everything you learned as a registered respiratory therapist, you might have learned a page of information on one subject, and maybe there's a page and a half of that subject in the adult critical care. So every area has additional information. But I'm going to talk about and summarize the top 10 pieces of information or areas of information that is on the adult critical care exam that's not something that you would have learned as a registered respiratory therapist. And if you want to keep track of us here, because if you'll smash that notify button, that bell button, we'll also notify you as we produce videos in each of those respective areas to help you prepare for the adult critical care examination. Now, I also want you to know that we can't prepare you completely just from YouTube videos. You'll probably want to get a book. Uh, I use the Lindsay Jones uh, method, and of course, uh, I'm one of the authors, so I'm a little bit biased. But there is 300 pages in this book, and I'd say probably as a registered respiratory therapist, you probably know half of it already. But then there's the other 40 or 50% that you do still need to know, and we're going to talk about the top 10 areas that you need to know for the adult critical care examination. Okay, number one, you need to have a better understanding of some of the systems in the body and their purpose. Yeah, as a registered respiratory therapist, you concentrated on those things related to the respiratory system and arguably the cardiovascular system. Now we're going to have to have a little bit more information in the endocrine system. We're going to have to understand the musculoskeletal system and some of the disorders that can come from several of the different systems in the body. And so that's something that you'll learn. All right, number two, and that is the infectious processes that can occur in the body, and especially infection that leads to sepsis. What is sepsis? How did you get there? And what kind of things that you need, do you need to do to treat sepsis? Sepsis is a very deadly issue. And so that naturally is going to be something that we see, see in the critical care setting and we worry about a lot. And that's something, some of the detail there is above and beyond what you may have learned as a registered respiratory therapist. Number three, and this is a fun one, it's the types of shocks that you might see. Now you've heard of things like anaphylactic shock, you've heard of cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic or hemorrhagic shock. There's lots of different types of shocks. They all, of course, are really just about losing your blood pressure, which is a deadly condition. So all shocks can lead to a deadly situation that could pose risk to the patient. So you need to understand a lot more about the different type of shocks that a patient can experience. And you'll learn that for the adult critical care examination. And our next topic is pharmacology. What can I say about pharmacology? You know, as a registered respiratory therapist, you may not have paid attention. In reality, you probably use the same 10 drugs, but and on the exam, you had to learn about 50, 60, 70 drugs in order just to get through the RRT. And the adult critical care examination is going to add another 50 or 60 drugs to that. These drugs are more common drugs seen in the intensive care unit and are things related to vasoactive medications, things that control blood pressure and cardiovascular drugs that you certainly see and hear about a lot, but you may need to increase your knowledge for the purpose of the adult critical care examination. One other next very popular item that you may not have studied very much about in your RRT studies 
is ventilator associated events. Now you probably talked about ventilator associated pneumonia. That's just one possible event. So for instance, did you know that getting a blood transfusion can have a negative impact on your lungs? And so you'll learn things such as that and that'll be an addition on the adult critical care exam as well. One thing that may happen also on that exam is that you have to deal more with patients who are at the end of their life. Now they may be on the edge of life and you're trying to treat them with such things as ECMO, but you may also be considering the idea of discontinuing life support. And that's a very tender thing that you'll have to do with the family and uh, with the help of the doctor. And so one of the things you'll have to understand is how to determine if the patient is viable, if they can go on, and do they, do they or will they ever have a good quality of life? For that, you'll have to study things like brain death studies and apnea studies and be able to interpret those things pretty significantly for the adult critical care examination. Another thing that you'll need to learn for the adult critical care examination is more information on patient nutrition how to give it, and then some of the details, some of the laboratory work that you might do to assess a patient's nutrition. These are things that you don't typically learn in preparation for your registered respiratory therapist testing, but you do need to know for the adult critical care examination. Nutrition impacts the patient's ability to wean, their strength, how many calories they have on board, and what type of calories they have. And so it is a deeper understanding of how to evaluate somebody's nutrition. By the way, this skill in particular, if you're working in ICU, you can use it immediately and you'll be able to help and help doctors understand when and why somebody's not ready for weaning because their nutrition is insufficient. Another very important aspect is hemodynamics and closely related to that is evidences of pulmonary hypertension and the medications and the therapies that you could use to relieve the pulmonary system of the hypertension there. There are various gases, medications, and approaches that go above and beyond what you may have learned as a registered respiratory therapist. Finally, the last topic that you may see on the adult critical care examination that you did learn in the course of studying for your registry is advanced ventilator modes and advanced ventilator types. And so it's on the adult critical care examination that you're going to get a lot more questions on pressure control ventilation, including initial settings and strategies. You'll also talk about high frequency ventilation and other augmented ventilation modes that you might have not talked about before. Perhaps you use some of these modes, perhaps you don't, but you'll have to get a better understanding of the possibilities with ventilator, ventilator modes and ideas and approaches when it comes to the adult critical care examination. Well, there it is. Everything you need to know for the adult critical care examination. Well, maybe not everything, but that's a start at least. Hey, we here at Restory Sensei, we do what you want us to do. And so with this video, if you're interested in us addressing each of those 10 concepts that can be seen on the adult critical care examination, please like and subscribe. I don't mean to hold you hostage for the like button, but that's really what we look at to decide if we're going to make that next video. And we're also interested in anything that you want us to make. In fact, this video was made because of a response to viewers like you. All right, so I'm Dennis with Restray Sensei, and I'll see you around.